Alrighty, hosses, welcome back. And in this video, I'm gonna start on the second half of the series, and that is how to make a multi client, multi threaded reverse shell. Sounds confusing, but it's not, I swear. So, in the first half of the series, what we did is we just made a reverse shell that could control one computer, one client. So, if your friend needed help, you could tell him to run the program, and that was great and all, but if you're like me, you have a lot of computers in your house and maybe you want to be able to manage them all remotely or maybe you are i don't know like head of a school or a company or maybe you just want to be able to access all your family's computers so you can help them out with whatever you want well it's going to be hard if you have to set up a bunch of servers because you need each of those clients to run their own program so in this tutorial what i'm going to do is i'm going to start showing you guys how to solve that problem and what we're going to do is we're gonna make one program where multiple clients can connect to it. So just like before, we're gonna to have to run one script on the server, but we can have you know a dozen or two dozen or however many clients we want connect to it, it's gonna be awesome. Now, before I just start hopping into the code, I wanna tell you guys how this is done. So before what we did is we created this socket on the server, and then we had another one on whatever client machine, and we made this connection object and I'll show you guys we're gonna do that later now what we did is we took that object and that was basically our connection our conversation however what we're gonna do this time is we're actually gonna take that connection object and we're gonna store them inside a list so now a bunch of people can connect and all we have to do is look at that list and then we look at all of our connections and then we're gonna choose the one that we want to use so the last thing I have to explain is, all right, how's that going to work? Because how are you going to be allowing clients to connect while you're kind of managing their computer or connecting to them? That sounds like you need multiple programs. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a multi-threaded program. So this program is going to be able to do two things at once. One of those things is just listening for connections and handling it, all of the backend stuff with sockets so we kind of saw that in the last tutorial so what we're going to do is we're going to put that on its own thread and it's going to take care of all the connection handling now the other thread what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to manage or connect to the computer remotely and send our commands so one part is for handling the connections and the other part is actually you know controlling everything sending commands the fun part so that's what we have and that is why we have to import threading and also Q. Some people call it Quay. They call it Q. Don't call it Quay. It's weird. It makes, freaks me out. All right. And now I'm just going to set up a couple constants. So number of threads and we actually don't need to write this as a constant. We can actually just type it in manually like we don't even need a variable at all. But what I like to do is I set up all my threading applications. Um, I kind of have like a template and this just allows me to see how many threads we're using and it just keeps it easier organized in my mind. All right, so we're gonna have two threads. Now, whenever we kick those threads off, we're gonna need to identify which one does which. Now you can identify them with like a name or a letter, but I'm just gonna keep it real simple. So the first thread, we're just going to call one and the second thread, we're going to call two. It doesn't really matter, but you know, might as well just keep it really easy. So we'll say that this first thread, that's going to be the part of the program responsible for just handling connections, allowing a bunch of clients to connect. And then whenever they do connect, they're going to store them in the list. Now this other one, thread number two, that's the one we're going to be saying, Hey, this is where we choose a client and then we're going to send it some commands over the network. So. Q U E U E. Why did they spell it like that? Who's coming up with these spellings right here? All right. Quay right here. And you guys are going to see whenever we set up our thread exactly what this does. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two lists. So remember, I got rid of my connection object, but whenever we set up a connection, what it does is it gives us back some information. One of them is the connection object itself, which is pretty much your conversation with another computer. And the other one is address information. And this is their IP address, the port number, all of that. So I'm actually gonna be storing these in two separate lists, but we're gonna be kind of managing them concurrently. So all connections, 
This is going to be able to store a bunch of connection objects. So we'll just set that to blank for now. And the other one is all addresses. All right. So if you guys are like, all right, why do you need two different lists? Well, because whenever a bunch of clients connected and we just want to review them all, we can't actually look at the connection object itself. That's just some weird thing in memory. This address information is where we can see, you know, their IP address and where we can pretty much say what client we want to connect to. So this is pretty much for humans and this is pretty much for computers. It's kind of the easiest way to explain it. And all right, so now that we got all the housekeeping out of the way, check this out. So the first two functions in this series are gonna be the same. So the way that we create sockets and the way that we bind sockets to our host, I mean, it's the same no matter if you do it one time or a hundred times. So that's why I just kept those two. And if you guys don't know what any of that means, then go watch like uh, the second video or I don't know, whatever one I did it. Now, the reason I got rid of socket accept is because we're not just gonna accept sockets like we did in the last tutorials. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a way to accept multiple connections. So actually I'm kinda running out of time, so that's what I'm gonna do in the next video. That's what we have to look forward to. It's gonna be sweet and I'll smell you then.